Summit 5 was crazy. So much to talk about. So I'm just going to talk about it in this video over some completely unrelated gameplay. But yeah, just have something in the back. I'm just going to go over the topics that were like highlights to me or important things that I want to talk about. Obviously, I'm not going to go over the whole entire tournament, right? But first off, MK Leo. So he placed ninth. So it was his first time placing out of top eight in like four years. I think it's I think it's that. I don't know what the exact stat is. Someone can look it up but it's been a really long time since he's placed out of top eight right um let alone out of top four or something so mkleo is one of my favorite players no doubt for sure i gotta say the aegis is not working out for him and i it's surprising to say it's pretty crazy to say that aegis is like too honest of a character they're really good they have such good strengths but the thing about them is they're actually pretty honest and linear and they don't have that cheese X factor that, you know, you kind of need in this game to clutch things out. Leo is the king of clutch, right? And there's so many times where he clutches games out, steals games from other people. Think Evo against Tweak back then, right? And he has factors with characters like Arsene. And honestly, Byleth has so much X factor and Byleth is a very dishonest character. I don't think people realize how dishonest that character is. Go back and watch the set with Tweak at summit and you can see leo literally losing every game with aegis even with byleth but on game three and four with byleth he cheeses out the stocks at 36 percent like 30 percent both times it's actually disgusting and those are true inescapable combos with the up b no matter how you di if you di out you get hit by the back air die to the side if you di in you get hit by the down air either get spiked or get sent up and die from the top so that cheese dishonest x factor like for example arsene too right that joker has is exactly how Leo can clutch things out. Of course, he's just a beast in neutral and all that stuff too. But having that extra X factor is, is I think, what makes the difference in why his Aegis isn't quite working out for him the same way. Another thing about characters to succeed in this game beyond having an X factor, you know, to be able to clutch things out, like Byleth being able to break shield or cheese people with the up B, Joker with Arsene, is that it also matters whether or not your character gets BS'd. For example, Cloud gets BS'd so bad, and that's what really limits him. Aegis gets BS'd bad, and that is also what's limiting Leo. He got BS'd a lot of times with super simple edge guards just because the character is so linear and limited on recovery. Like, for example, in the set against Riddles, once he got uh, the Gates of Hell grab, you know, that kick that just sends you at that really bad horizontal angle, that's checkmate. Guaranteed. There's nothing he can do to get back as long as Riddles doesn't mess up. This is another reason why Sephiroth is so bad. That character gets BS'd hard. Being as big as he is, so he gets hit super easily, but being as light as literally Kirby, so he dies mega mega easily and early. It's just like a formula to get BS, which is one of the many reasons beyond, you know, having the worst frame data and out of shield in the game that Sephiroth is honestly just not good and not competitively viable. But yeah, back to Leo. I'm glad he, you know, went back to the Byleth against Tweak and, you know, <laughs> implemented that clutch cheese BS factor and at least got two games back on the board, right? And I don't know why he's so reluctant to go back to Joker because obviously his Joker is, you know, godlike. So I really don't know what's holding him back from going back to that character. Um, I know he mentioned he was like bored of the character, but he said he was having fun again with the slingshot stuff. I don't know. He's just having fun with Aegis, I guess. But I think when he wants to win again, I think Joker and Byleth together, that will be the way to go. Last thing about Aegis that I think is also a problem for Leo is that there's just too much matchup experience against that character because there's so much high level Aegis practice, right? Between Cosmos, in Japan there's Shuton, back then Spargo was playing them, and now of course Leo's playing them. They're just, they're just kind of everywhere versus there's literally only him at the top as Byleth and only him at the top as Joker. So I just think there's too much available matchup practice and experience against Aegis. So yeah, Leo out at 9th to Tweak, which brings me right to my next topic, which is Tweak. I'm so glad to see him do as well as he did this tournament. Like, I listen to Tweak Talks, Tweak's podcast, you know, so I definitely have a lot of support for him and want to see him do well. Tweak definitely had the hypest sets of the tournament, in my opinion. His sets against Leo, against Gluto, and against Spargo were all, like, standout sets for me. And he was so close to clutching it out against Akala for, I believe, 5th place. He really turned up with the Diddy in a way that he was putting combos together that were very freestyle instead of just going for optimal pass the whole way. So it was cool to see him execute a less orthodox game plan in bracket, right? Like just throw out all these crazy combos. Like he was, you know, kind of looping um, Leo on the platform a few times and he didn't get reverse 3 0 by Leo. It was close, but he actually clutched it out and didn't let the curse happen again. So big ups to Tweak, super happy for him for that. 
And you know, I think Diddy's his best character. I'm I think he can really just stick to Diddy and maybe possibly even solo main Diddy. I even as a Sephiroth main, I'm happy he's not playing Sephiroth anymore for him because that character is so bad. And honestly, guys, I love Sephiroth. I play the character, but I'm not competitive. But yeah, for Tweak, I think main Diddy. He was using PT as essentially a secondary this tournament. I don't know if that's necessarily the way to go because I don't think they do things for him that Diddy doesn't. Maybe Charizard and Ivy do because they can get some pretty early kills. And if you notice watching the tournament, Tweak did have a lot of times where he was struggling to get the kill with Diddy. And on the other hand, Charizard and Ivy do have really glaring weaknesses that Diddy doesn't either. And of course, Squirtle just doesn't bring anything new to the table that Diddy doesn't. I think a great secondary for him would be Wolf, and his Wolf is really clean. Wolf has no problems killing with strays between his lagless smash attacks, unpunishable smash attacks, that back air, and of course even a kill throw through back throw, right? And he can play a really patient neutral with Laser, which is perfectly how Tweak likes to play. And yeah, Wolf is very straightforward and linear, and there's a ton of matchup experience against Wolf, kind of like the problem with Aegis that Leo had, but the difference is that Wolf doesn't get BS'd the way that Aegis does. And in Tweak's case, he doesn't win his games through Clutch Factor. Leo very often wins through Clutch Factor, so he needs a character with Clutch Factor. Tweak just wins or loses straightforward, right? So that's why I think Wolf works for him, whereas someone more linear or straightforward doesn't work for Leo. All right, on to the next topic. It seems like people are figuring out Steve. Of course, Akala was the only one there playing Steve, but he's also regarded as essentially the best Steve after the Invitational event, right? And to see so many people take games, not only just games, like beat him in games and take sets off him, I think Steve is being figured out. I still think the character is super broken and basically limitless potential, but it's good to see that counterplay is developing and, you know, even, even Steve can bleed. On a side note, I just want you guys to know that Steve's diamond back air sweet spot is stronger than Bowser full rage back air and Sephiroth winged full rage sweet spot back air. And this video is getting a little bit longer than I wanted it to be already. So uh, even though there is more I'd want to talk about, I think I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon. Just some quick closing thoughts. Good to see Spargo back. I think he's a little bit rusty as far as competition, but it has just been a long time since he, you know, competed seriously again. So he'll shake it off. He'll come back better. Riddles is really climbing up the ranks and I love Kazuya. So <laughs> that character is so entertaining. So I love seeing Riddles do well with Kazuya. Light is proving himself to be one of the best in America and the whole world. He just keeps consistently placing so well so high in all these tournaments definitely a top five player lastly congrats to proto won double down and now won summit won both the big na tournaments that he attended so proto's just proving he's one of the best too lastly i really hope to see leon and ned at a summit one day so we can get some bowser and sephiroth representation i know i just went on about how unviable sephiroth is competitively but of course i want to watch a high level super you know top level sephiroth do well at a tournament like summit We'll wrap it up there, guys. Let me know your summit thoughts below in the comments. What were highlights for you? What were standout moments that you enjoyed? Do me a favor, give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subbed already. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.